Hey guys, what's up? It's Mr. Viewman here, and today I'm going to have an overview and kind of a comparison between the iPad and the iPad Touch on the software that's running. Like, what's different between these apps and those apps? Basically, that's what I'm going to be doing. So, when you first get an iPad or you first get an iPad Touch, these are the apps you get, um, with the exception of iBooks. I'll get into that later. So, this is what, just ignore that one. But other than that, this is what the apps look like when you first get it. You have Calendar, Contacts, Notes, Maps, Videos, YouTube, iTunes, App Store, Settings, and then Safari, Mail, Photos, and then iPad, which is your, I mean iPod, which is your music and stuff. And then on the iPad Touch, we've got Mail, Calendar, Photos, Contacts, YouTube, and we have Stocks. The iPad does not come with the stocks application. We have maps. We have weather. For some reason, the iPad does not come with a weather application. But there are some good alternatives like, um, like Weatherbug. It's a pretty good one. But I'm not sure why they didn't include a default application. Um, also, voice memo in the iPad Touch. The iPad does not come with a voice memo application. Also, you can get a you know a replacement right there voice memos but for some reason doesn't you know does it come with one on default I'm not sure why that is and we got notes clock iPad does not come with a clock application um, I don't really find much use for this anyway except for the stopwatch I actually do use that sometimes I'm not sure you know they should maybe included that because I do like that stopwatch and the timer does help as well and then we have the calculator, another one that the iPad does not have for some odd reason. That means you're going to probably have to go to the App Store and buy an, a calculator application if you really want one. Because surprisingly, I actually really did use this application. It was a good little app that came on the iPad Touch. Next we have settings, and then iTunes, and then we got music, video, safari, and then the App Store. So those are the kind of look at the apps, and now we'll go ahead and open them up and show you kind of what's different about them. So first we got Calendar. As I, as you can see on the iPad, it is very good looking, and it's completely different than the iPod Touch. But all right, we'll go ahead and look at the calendar. This is what it looks like. It's on the day, and then if you put it on the month, and then a list. We don't have any events. So that's what the calendar app looks like on there. Go ahead and come back up. And then on the iPad, man, all right, we got a very, very elegant and very good looking design. We got day, and this is what the day looks like, the events, the different times. Then we have the week. This is what it looks like for the week, the days of the week. And then the different times, all oh, scroll down through there. And then I really like this one, the month. And at the bottom of each of them, we got this really neat scroll bar and it will scroll to the month or the week that you would like so right now it's on Tuesday December 21st but we want to you know go back to whatever and you, you can just you know scroll through there and it will take you straight to that page so that's a neat feature also list we'll just have like the month and or the day or whatever and all the times and also you can put this in landscape mode and it kind of gives you a little bit wider viewing angle a little bit makes everything a little bit wider so that is a neat application so they did make the calendar app a lot better we'll go in order on the iPad the contacts app I'm not going to open up on the iPad touch because we do have some contacts in there but basically on the iPad touch it's just a list of people and but for the iPad it's very neat it's like a book design we got A through Z and then the numbers and then also you can do it in landscape mode and then you add a new contact and we got the full keyboard bringing out here so that is really nice and they did a great job on that one too the notes they're pretty much the same so we don't really need to take a look at that the maps they're pretty much the same as well it's just got a little bit a little bit rearranged a little bit different of a layout you can use the maps application in landscape on the iPad as well on the videos application it's a little bit different on the iPad you select it and it will show you kind of like break it down into categories right now I just have one TV show and when you when you press when you press it 
kind of brings up this neat interface. You can kind of look at it, kind of get some more information about it, and then you press play and it'll start playing the video. And on this, it'll just, you know, have your videos, and when you press it, it will start playing. Now, this is my sister's iPod. No, I don't listen to Justin Beamer. Just like, uh, just letting you guys know. Okay. And of course, like the other apps, you can use the videos application in landscape mode. All right, the next big change is YouTube. The YouTube application on the iPad is amazing. Let's go ahead and open that up. And this is the YouTube application. It's very different, and it looks pretty awesome. So it has, you know, we have columns of three of the videos, and then we got top rated, the top rated views, and then also columns of three, the most viewed. You can um, upload your favorites. Subscriptions, if you log in, you can see your subscriptions. And also when you log in, I'm not going to log in, you can see your own videos if you want to watch your own videos. On the iPad, it's, it's similar, just not as, you know, many columns. And if you go on the more, you can, you know, basically do the same thing. So it is, it is similar, it's just the, it looks a lot, a lot nicer on the iPad because of this, because of the bigger display. And one of the coolest new features about the new YouTube application on the iPad is when, say you go to watch a video, and I'll just randomly choose one, um, it opens up this really cool looking interface, and I'll just pause that, and we have you know, the title of the video, and the date is added to the person, and from there we have the ratings, the views, the description, and right here we have these little tabs, we can go to the related videos, or we can click more from so it can do more videos from this the person who made this video or we can browse the comments also at the top you can you know add it to your favorites or something like that um, also if you put it in landscape mode it will open up the video but on the main menu it, it will automatically show the comments so if you just see you can see some of the comments and it will just select from there if you want to make it full screen, there's this little knob right here, you just touch it, and then it'll bring the video full screen. If you want to go back, you know, you just press it. So that's the new YouTube application. Is It's been revamped, and it looks a lot nicer than the previous YouTube application on the iPad Touch.